Now when it comes to selecting shapes, there's a variety of options available to you. If you want to select one shape, simply click it. I can choose this process shape or choose the decision shape. If I wanted to select all shapes and all objects on my page, I would press the key combination Control A. Control A is a quick way to select all the sheets, shapes. Another way to select shapes is simply to lasso them, which means you put your mouse in the top left corner and you drag across and you drag down to select the shapes in that area. And when I let go, it selected both shapes. Alternatively, you can click a shape, hold the control key and, hold, and click another shape to select more than one shape. You can either use the control key or the shift key, whichever feels more natural. Just click your first shape and then hold the control or the shift and click each other shape that you want to select. So there's a variety of ways. Control A to select all, lassoing with your mouse or holding the control or shift key and selecting a variety of shapes. So I'm going to lasso these two shapes. Now having selected both shapes, the sorts of things you would do would be format the text. On the home tab in the ribbon, you'll actually see there's a font group right here. And in the font group, you've got for starters font and the font is Calibri. I might change the font, for example, just by rolling over the options in this list, I get a live preview, and I'm going to change the font to Arial. As soon as I click on Arial, I've now applied the font Arial. Now you've also got font size in this group, and it's currently 8 points. I could hit the drop down and I could roll again over the various sizes and get a live preview of what the sizes would look like. And I'm going to go for 12. You've also got the ability to grow the font using this button, or increase the font, and decrease the font with this button visually. So I could actually keep hitting this button to increase the font, or click this button to decrease the font until I was visually happy with the size of the font. Again, it only selects those affects those shapes that you have selected. So it's not necessarily going to do this to all shapes, unless of course you've selected all the shapes. You can also turn on bold and turn off bold, and turn on italics, and turn off italics. And you've also got underline, and turn it off. And you've got strike throw, and turn it off. In this particular button here, you've got the ability to change the case from normal case to all capitals, which is uppercase, or change it to capitalize just each word. So the first letter of each word is a capital. Or you have the option to choose small caps, which means that the capital letter is slightly larger than the other letters that have been turned into capitals, or you can go back to normal. In here, you've also got the font colour. So if you felt that white wasn't clear enough, you could change it to black, or yellow, or any of the options listed here. So I might go for black. So those are the options in the font group, and if anything wasn't immediately present in that group, you have got a dialog box launcher here for font, and if you were to click that, here are all your font options, including your case, your position, superscript and subscript, underline, single and double, strike through, single and double, your font, your font style, bold italic, and your font size and font color and transparency and language. So you've got many font settings and you've even got character settings in here, like making it condensed or making it expanded. So there's various settings you have in here as well. But in, now I'd like to look at the paragraph group. So I'm going to cancel out of here and go across my ribbon to this group called paragraph. Now at the moment, the text in these shapes is vertically aligned in the middle. I could send it to the top, to the bottom, or return it back to the middle. So that's your vertical alignment. Horizontally, they're also centered, but I could send them to the left, to the right, or return them to the center. And justify will only work if you've got an entire paragraph. You also have the ability to indent and unindent, or decrease indent. And you have the ability to also rotate the text, should you ever need to. 
and if I click it again and again and again I'll eventually get back to how it was originally placed. And lastly in this group you have the ability to apply bullets um, to anything that you've got selected and you can turn the bullets off as well. And I'll put them back to being horizontally centered. So those are your paragraph options and again if you hit the paragraph dialog box you'll be taken to the paragraph group where you can control the indentation, the spacing and any alignment options. You can also control bullets under here so there's a variety of bullets from a tick to a circle to a square and there are other options in here as well. But I'm just going to go cancel. So that's how you select shapes and that's how you format shapes in terms of font and paragraph. As far as selecting text in a shape, let me just go to this particular shape and I'll press F2 to edit. The idea here is if I'm at the beginning of discharge, if I control right arrow, I'll leave a word at a time to the right. Control left arrow, I'll go back a word at a time to the left. If I go Control A, I'll select all the text. And if I click in front of Discharge and go Control Shift right arrow, I'll select a word at a time to the right. But just as easily, you can use your mouse to select text in a shape. But those are sort of options you have available. And I'll press Escape. 